Um, so again, welcome everyone. Uh, uh, Lani, Melissa, uh, Virash as well, we have spoken before. Um, as, I, as I just mentioned before, um, my name is Alejandro Veris Reyes. I'm a lecturer in digital design and fabrication. I'm an architect by, by training actually. Um, and I lead the area of design and innovation in our school, particularly around digital fabrication and digital practices and creative thinking applied to a range of different areas, um, sometimes outside the boundaries of design, such as manufacturing and robotics, which you're gonna see in a second. Um, the key, the key, the, the core, I think, idea about this presentation is to introduce you about the structure of the program, but also the motivation behind the program, why we develop this course. So you know a little bit more about the ethos of the program and you understand where we're coming from and how maybe your project ideas could sit within that kind of curriculum uh, delivery plan. Um, first of all, um, oh, I cannot see my mouse. Uh, yeah, first of all, um, I'm going to introduce myself. That would be me. Um, I also lead the BA Digital Design and Engineering course, which is an undergraduate program opening in September. So we look after that sort of pipeline of talent that starts at, at the undergraduate level and then moves on to master's level research and project development. And I also um, supervise uh, PhD students in that, in that space. Um, my, my own uh, work in the architecture subject um, it started a few years ago. I joined our school in 2014 and um, I've been looking at material systems and digital design applications applied to built environment as well as uh, certain techniques or production or fabrication methods such as uh, 3D printing. This is part of the work we have done with uh, an industry partner called Thomas Duggan Studio. Um, and submitted to the box and I have also an associate role at uh, the Bartlett uh, supervising and looking with master students of their architectural design and mark program. Um, so basically the, the, the motivation right to develop this course um, begins by us as a school and as a faculty looking at the contribution of the arts and creative thinking across a range of sectors this is tied into a, a knowledge exchange agenda that help us or facilitates us um, interacting with industry and how we can use our skills and our, and our approaches our design methods to contribute to that industrial sort of landscape beyond the creative sector but also looking into other areas such as healthcare manufacturing engineering and so on so it is in that context that we uh, develop uh, a, a range of courses actually, uh, which at the time included a an undergraduate course on VR design and uh, another postgraduate course around creative technologies and the Smart Urban Futures program as well, all focusing this digital sort of agenda and digitally facilitated curriculum, right? How can we explore that digital curriculum in a multidisciplinary way? Um, and actually, there is an argument for that, you know, around students and particularly undergraduate students that have interests which are cross disciplinary. This is part of the UK, you know, landscape. Uh, however, we, we have seen an international market around those spaces as well, particularly looking at uh, students that actually have an interest in STEM research, science, technology, engineering or maths, but also would like to combine that or also look into what are the intersections between that and the social sciences or the arts and humanities. So there is actually people out there that is interested in looking into these multidisciplinary spaces, but usually get um, into very kind of specific niche courses and we want to be open and expansive around what these courses can, can do uh, for you. Uh, so that has included so far a range of projects. This is a project from last year. This is a product designer working on wearables and data. This is a wearable project looking into um, monitoring user experiences in cultural spaces. And we work with the Tate Museum of Modern Art to develop this project. And she's a product designer by background, but also looking into digital fabrication and data systems to support wearables design. So as you can see, it's a very sort of cross-disciplinary space. 
Um, and we also feed this course with our own uh, research. I do uh, research myself on uh, creative robotics and how we can use digital technologies uh, such as robotics and 3D printing for creative applications. What you're seeing on your screen now is a workshop we did last year with a series of partner universities in, uh, from China around uh, robotic creativity or robotic art and how we can collaborate with machines for the production of creative output. So it was a quite fun <laughs> uh, workshop of students designing the tools that you can see at the end of the robot, as well as then collaboratively drawing and painting with uh, machines using computer vision uh, applications. So it was quite, quite good fun. Um, what areas do we work on? Of course, we are looking after uh, a, a range of applications for the use of digital technologies in the creative sector. So that can include creative robotics, built environment, industrial design, manufacturing or automation. Uh, BETS project actually looks into the Fab City agenda that, as you might know, is stems or spins off the Fab Lab agenda, which has to do with 3D printing and how digital fabrication can um, engage with broader cities and communities. Um, but also we're looking into what that means in terms of innovation. So it's not just about existing areas and contexts of practice, we are looking after um, certain questions and we invite you to also address issues such as new materials, new modes of sustainable production, new markets or new business models for the creative sector and the creative use of digital technologies. Um, these courses were actually approved by a quite, um, we were really, really lucky to have a really prime kind of industrial panel, advisory panel looking after the course design and that includes the Manufacturing Technology Center in uh, Coventry, the Institute of uh, Social Innovation in Birmingham, uh, the Architectural Robotics Lab in Cardiff University, and the head of the uh, UK Autodesk, uh, which as you might know, is one of the largest software companies in the creative and built environment sectors. <clears throat> So just to quickly outline the curriculum, how does it work? Uh, basically the whole curriculum, we spent two semesters looking after this process of development. How do you turn an idea into a viable product service or experience, right? So how do we start from that proof of concept stages, moving on to prototyping and then into how to piloting and demonstrating what that prototype can do. That could be anything. It could be a system. It could be a product. It could be a method. It could be an approach for you to maybe 3D print with sustainable materials. Maybe it's a coding system that allows you to access certain technologies in certain ways. BETS project, for example, is about looking at Plymouth as a Fab City network. So it's a very strategic you know, vision for what the Fab City agenda could be. And of course, uh, I will let you know more about the application process, but we can discuss with you whether your ideas fit right with the curriculum of the course or not. Um, to achieve that, we, we develop uh, a, a core sort of curriculum space called the Design Lab, as I mentioned before. Um, and the Design Lab brings together all the work that you do around testing, prototyping, engaging with technology, co-designing and so on. So it's not just a design studio, it's a very experience driven space where your project becomes a heart really of what you will do. And it's also the space where you can bring industry partners in, you can talk to external businesses, you can talk to other researchers and so on. Um, and that covers a range of areas. So maybe your ideas are a bit more in the arts and design space and you want to engage with elements of making, fine arts, design for the cultural sector that fits slightly better with the MA design innovation curriculum that includes that art and design sort of background. Um, then the MSc program is a bit more aligned with technical design, industrial design. If you want to look into elements of materials and performance, production, manufacturing or robotics, that fits a bit more with that more technical profile of the course. And we also co-teach the design lab with the MA Smart Urban Futures that looks into data and places or health technologies, wearables, right? It has to do with us, right? The body, the person in the built environment and how data can help us mediate those relationships. So it's a really exciting environment. You can do many different things and you will benefit from interacting with students and projects that come from a range of different areas and a range of different um, industrial sectors, right? Um, 
considering last year and this year's students, we have had students with a background on psychology, cybersecurity, computing, product design, architecture engineering, uh, data science, and so on. So it's a really exciting environment for you to work in. Um, oh, sorry, I'm missing an image there. Um, and, and, and that process is, is quite guided, you know, through uh, what we call the TRL scale. This is not something we design, it's part of the UK framework to deliver innovation projects to the market. Um, TRL stands for Technology Readiness Levels, and we include a curriculum and design briefs that transition between that ideation research, early stage, you know, ideation proof of concept sort of stage up to that prototyping, piloting, demonstrating what is your innovation about. Of course, we don't expect you to commercialize anything within the program, but we actually do have in semester two a design and business model that helps you look into what is what you develop and how you can set up a business model around it, either through generating new intellectual property or maybe spin off with a company or maybe license some technology with a different company. And that's a bit up to you. But of course, that employability element is already built into the program. It's not something we do afterwards with you. You will finish the program already with a clear picture about the impact on the market and the industrial sectors you might want to work with. I think as well, Alejandro, um, the key thing sorry, as well with that is that anything that you create, uh, including the intellectual property and the business model, uh, you get to keep. So um, yeah, yeah, that's really important, Beth. Thank you. The, in 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 the University of Plymouth, uh, what you create is your intellectual property. Uh, we have explored within the partners actually certain licensing or co-design strategies that might allow you to share some of those outputs or you can create your own business but yeah that's right you keep the intellectual property over all of your outputs uh, unless you're working with an industry partner in which case you can negotiate right what does it mean in terms of ownership and how you develop that um, this is not something that we came up with as i mentioned before this is actually the standard innovation delivery framework for the uk including uk research councils innovate uk which is a core funding agency supporting the development of innovation and research in this country as well as hopefully taking you to that stage where you can already demonstrate a project and potentially look for investment or further follow-up funding to develop your um, proposals um, the semester structure is pretty straightforward, really. You have a design lab, which is a core module that runs across semesters one and two. And in semester one, you have a skills um, module that, that, that covers all the technical, you know, skills development aspects, but it's part of the same project, if you wish. And then in semester two, you have an entrepreneurship module, which is actually co-taught with the MA in Smart Urban Futures and MA Design. So you will actually benefit from also interacting with the design space, right, in our, uh, from, from our school. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation before, this is quite tied into this development of new uh, digital capabilities in our faculty. And that includes elements such as the Digital Fabrication Lab, which is a new space is excellent is um is it has a, a capability and a combination of capabilities which is quite unique to the region including actual resources like um a family of high resolution 3d scanners or medical grade biocompatible 3d printing which is not available uh anywhere else in the region really or it's not available as a combination of kit right you can actually prototype something 3d scan something on high resolution then go to the immersive media lab and then you know visualize that in our immersive dome and those workflows those processes are not otherwise uh, available to you uh, regionally and we of course make use of certain technologies like ultimaker 3d printing that allows you to print with more than 200 materials so if you have questions on that i'm happy to answer them for you but this is basically a space where you can pretty much make almost anything really um and it's up to you and your project how you can you know benefit from uh these these resources our immersive media lab as well is quite kind of unique to the region and includes a large immersive um uh, nine meter 
diameter rig that allows you to uh, motion uh, track motion capture if you're working on, for example, gaming approaches, uh, green screen for film applications, immersive visualization through VR, and a small sort of full dome technology that you can see in that short video there. Um, so again, it's a bit up to you. Uh, we have a range of really powerful, really interesting resources for you to play with. And we actually, during semester one, which is a bit more research semester, if you wish, setting up your ideas, brainstorming, what is what you want to do, you will have, as, as Beth can tell you, you will have a lot of time to play around with tech and to actually explore this in order to come up with new ideas and new innovative projects for you to work in. Um, in terms of knowledge exchange, uh, this course sits within a broader industry faculty plan around kind of how do we engage with these industrial sectors. So it's not just what we do in the masters. There's a broader context for this, mainly facilitated by um, a knowledge exchange team called uh, the Bridge, uh, which lives in the Faculty of Arts, Humanities, and Business, and 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 we have been really lucky to have their help to set up a few things in our in our program. This is a bit more internal in our course, the future lecture series, which brings together a number of specialists to talk us, uh, uh, to us about things like immersion or cities, uh, fab labs, sensing, and basically how do they deal in industry with these technologies? This is not only an academic exercise, but you will actually get experience of interacting with that interface right between academic research and industrial engagement and how your ideas can actually become realities in the business world so uh this uh this industry lecture series is actually a quite prime example of that and we have had guests this year talking at, to us about ar vr talking us about uh, fab labs and digital uh, fabrication from indonesia uh 3d scanning from cornwall just here like an hour away so it's really a prime uh, set of uh, guests that we have uh, almost every week talking to you about their uh, innovative ideas. Uh, this is just a brief example from last year, actually, including uh, really big companies like Calvium or Touchbyte working on face recognition and artificial intelligence or uh, Joaquin, who is one of the founders of the Southwest Internet of Things Network. So it's a, a fantastic uh, lineup of guests. Um, and our university through the bridge is delivering uh, a really large project called I Mayflower, which is funded through the Cultural Development Fund, which precisely, again, in alignment to this, to this master's, aligns to develop the use of immersive and digital technologies to drive growth in the local creative economy. Uh, actually, through this project, we are funding some of the studentships that you might have seen either in our social media, but that I will mention now in a second. We're also part of the Southwest Creative Technology Network. This is funded by Research England and looks into the development of certain cohorts of specialists and researchers and people in industry looking at topics and to playfully explore the applicability of certain technologies such as, such as immersion, automation or uh, data across the Southwest of England. I am an automation uh, fellow myself and we have in our school and in our faculty people that is working in immersion and data as well. Um, this is part of our network of, of, of uh, research and uh, part of our partners um, to conduct uh, the research projects we're currently engaged with and from my end and particularly on something that might be a bit more relevant to the specific course, I have been uh, researching the use of uh, robotic fabrication techniques for built environment and product design applications and that includes the element of the delivery of intellectual property around mud and cop construction together with the University of Cardiff or the use of high performance composites to 3D print with porcelain and, and clay in the context of product design and sculptural you know, design applications on work that has been exhibited at the Tate's and Ives and the Box, the Plymouth Museum. Um, just really the, the last few things uh, for general intake, we have a range of studentships uh, available as, as you heard in the presentation before. These uh, studentships include uh, 5,000 uh, pounds from which 3,000 uh, pounds are paid towards your course fees and 2,000 pounds for you to uh, fund your project. And that can include materials or consumables or travel expenses or staffing expenses or whatever that might be for your project 
and that covers a range of different areas and projects, including audio and artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, the Internet of Things, um, digital fabrication, virtual engineering environments, and so on. And you will be working not only in our master's program with funding available to you, but additionally, you will be working in partnership with an industry partner. If you have interested in specific to architecture and the built environment, we currently have two studentships with LHC, Lazy Hickey and Kelly. Uh, that's an architecture company based in Plymouth that wants to develop two projects with our students. One on the development of prototypes of built building components um, using building information modeling approaches and another project using gaming technologies for the visualization and simulation of building analysis. Um, and those two projects um, are available for you and you already have the link from the previous presentation, but I'm happy to share with you the link in a second as well. So you can access more information, but of course you can always send me an email if you have any question. Um, application, uh, a unique thing about this program is that it doesn't require a portfolio. The reason for that is that it's a quite multidisciplinary program. So we expect to also receive students that maybe have a bit of a manufacturing or computing background that might not have a creative portfolio. So it's, you can submit it if you wish as part of your application, but it's not a requirement. Um, and a, basically a short statement, personal statement really, that outlines your project, your interests and goals so you, we can check you know and talk to you about what is the, um, the the fitness or how we can support your project ideas throughout this program if you wish to prepare a draft of that statement and submit something in advance before you submit your application that's also perfectly fine i'm happy to give you feedback on that um, in terms of grades it's normally a 2-1 but we also value industrial experience so the standard is a 2-1 in a previous you know BA, BSc degree however if you have experience in industry or working with companies that might help you build you know your project uh, we're also quite keen to hear that and we consider that as part of your application anyway and an English requirement IELTS which is the standard 6.5 grade um, you can find more information about this in the course website anyway. And that's my contact information, which uh, you can also read on the left hand side of your screen. So you can please copy my email there. Um, uh, thank you very much for that. That was my uh, presentation. Um, I'm going to just stop recording now before uh, the Q&A.